we want to say happy Tuesday. I believe uh, everything is working. I uh, want to welcome those who have chosen to join in on my videos. You know, uh, periodically I jump in here. So I want to first and foremost say I hope everybody who celebrates the, the Thanksgiving holiday had a, a great opportunity with uh, family and friends. And it's going to be a perfect segue into today's message because that's what we're talking about. How do you develop healthy relationships? But before we start the show, <clears throat> I always got to pay respects to those who uh, shoulders uh, some of us who grew up stand on. And I definitely want to send my condolences out to the uh, the Jones family, the Sneed family, and the Bentley family, family on the loss of one of their uh, pillars in their family, uh, Uncle Hank, who passed. And I know that uh, Gregory always listens to my recording, so I definitely want to make sure that he knows that the greatness in his in his horn talents definitely stand on the shoulders of his Uncle Hank. So we definitely want to uh, send out our condolences to that family. And also, uh, my last presentation, one of my good friends, uh, Terrence Black, was was uh, was sick, and and I heard that he's really not doing as well as we expected at this time. So we also want to make sure that everybody out there who believes in the power of prayer, prays for the family, and also prays for both families of of, of Mr. Hank Bentley and also uh, for Terrence Black. So as we move on into my topics, I want to definitely tell people that <clears throat> one of the greatest things that just happened is that it's the collective uh, gathering of family. And it seems that Thanksgiving is, is usually the holiday that uh, brings most of the family members and friends and things together. But one of the things we have to look at in that is that uh, sometimes we're with family members and friends who we haven't seen since last year. Uh, we bring people into our house. Some family members bring friends of theirs into our house. And in most cases, the uh, events are generated by the energy that's brought into the home. It's also the energy that's put on by the host. It's the energy that's brought together by the food. And in so many times, those are relationships. In most cases, people talk about relationships as the uh, connection between two people. Uh, you know, I'm in a very positive relationship or I'm not in a very productive relationship. But the biggest relationship that happens to most people is the relationship with yourself. And many people uh, sort of brush that off because they think that they're in a position to have to take care of everybody who comes into their home or they have to take care of everybody who they encounter. And that's not true because you only can provide the best relationship with somebody if you have an amazing relationship with yourself. And a lot of times we don't take the times to build the relationships with ourselves. We move away from relationships. We move into relationships. We move aside from relationships because we haven't established what our foundational principles are in our relationship with ourself. Now, what I'm going to do is this, this, this presentation right here is, is actually a retreat. It's a workshop. So we're going to work on doing that and we're going to try to possibly put that together. So for those people who uh, would like to know more, I'm going to give you a brief summary today of not just some things that you need to do, as far as a personal relationship with yourself, but also we're going to talk about the relationships that are um, uh, sort of everlasting between two people. Because one of the things that I found out recently in some research is that the rate of marriage between younger people and older people is up in the country. And we wonder why that is happening, but it's because I think people are more aware of what they should expect in a relationship because maybe my message is, is a little late that people are now starting to have a better relationship with themselves and once you understand what you're going to accept it's very easy for you to accept somebody else into your 
circle of influence because you understand what it takes for that relationship to be very, very positive. So I'm going to give you three things on what you need to do, just three things out of many, that what you can do to just have a positive relationship with yourself and what it does when you start to develop that positive relationship with yourself. The first one is self-awareness and your emotional intelligence. Now, what does self-awareness mean? Self-awareness means you need to understand what makes you tick, what makes you smile, what makes your energy level go up, what will you accept in your life that you won't accept from anyone else. That's what your self-awareness is. I'm going to give you brief, brief definitions of these. I'm not going into long, drawn-out uh, definitions. I'm going to go into brief. I'm going to give you brief definitions. And so if you want to explore that also farther, further, we can give you some information on how you can get in contact with me. Also, your emotional intelligence. Now, your emotional intelligence is driven by your emotions. Now, you know, last time I talked about toxic emotions, emotional toxins, and your emotions are what would drive your interactions. Your emotions are how you how you wake up in the morning, how you go to bed at night, how you interact with people. What you put in your spirit the first thing in the morning is what drives your emotions. And so your emotional intelligence can be limited if you are emotionally toxic in that you don't have that self-love for yourself. So what you're looking for is validation from everybody else. And so it never gives you any validation into how you establish relationships because the, the last encounter that you may have may ruin something that's very positive in your next encounter, which is your a relationship. Okay, let's move to the next one. It gives you confidence and assertiveness. Now, when you're feeling good about yourself, when you're walking on, on water, when you're walking amongst, amongst the clouds and your confidence is, I'm not talking about that arrogant confidence. I'm talking about the confidence that you know that when you walk in the building, the song back in the day say, uh, the men all pause, right? So when you walk into the room and you know that people pause for you, it's because they see the confidence that's being spewed from your aura. People see that you are walking in your own destiny and that you don't need anybody else to validate who you are. And that's what we talk about assertiveness. Some people misconstrue assertiveness with aggressiveness, right? So if you have somebody who's passionate, and we know that people in this world have been labeled aggressive because of their passion, but why can't they be assertive in what they need and what they require or what they believe that what they're standing for is delivered in an assertive way? So that's what happens when you start to have that 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 own self-love, self-care for yourself. You walk in confidence and you walk in the room and you're assertive about what you need in your life to make sure that you're valued in every form and fashion that is created. And the third one I'm going to talk about is why you need to develop a healthy relationship with yourself is stress management. We know anxiety, stress, depression, those things are the number one killers for many people in the world. And the reason why is because you're always trying to prove yourself to others. You're always trying to be the best or you're trying to wear the mask that you believe that other people are going to validate you on when they see you. And so that, that gives you a lot of stress. When you go into a situation and you're not qualified for that situation, it's because you did not put in the work that gives you the opportunity for you to have a healthy relationship with yourself. And that causes stress. That causes stress. So those are just three of those that I'm talking about in reference to how you can develop healthy and powerful relationships with yourself. Now let's jump into the reasons, some of the reasons that we're going to talk about now, the, the couple relationship. And why are we talking about couple relationships? Because we see that so many times, you know, if you watch those reality shows, you, you know they're, they're, they're scripted. But sometimes you have to listen to the words on what they're saying. And these are problems that really do reflect couple relationships in our country. And some of the things, I'm going to give you just four of these. And then I'm going to give you, I'm going to turn around and give you three solutions that I think can help you as you move forward in developing your new relationship, maybe um, with a significant other, or even if you're just looking at developing some really close friends, you got to look at some of these, these characteristics 
that may change the way you see relationships or how you get in relationships. Now, one is unrealistic expectations. We talk about a lot of times we see people get into a situation, two people are dating, the gentleman takes her out, he takes her out to a very expensive restaurant, knowing that that's not who he's going to be going forward in the relationship because he's trying to impress her, or impress her. That's an unrealistic expectation that you've now set yourself up to for failure. Because now what's going to happen is that young lady believes that if you show me this, what they say, if somebody shows you who you are, who they are the first time, believe them. So if you're told to believe them, then you need to understand that if you, you don't have the ability, that's an unrealistic expectation. Now, don't think that I'm going to talk to the men without talking to the women. So let me explain to you what an unrealistic expectation is. You go out to the club, you got the fake eyelashes on, you got the fake hair, you got the fake um, uh, liposuction, you got all of these things that you have asked uh, or you have purchased to be someone who you're not. And then when you get home and you take off all that stuff, you introduce the person, you introduce yourself as a different person. See, the expectations that you set is that you want to be this beautiful individual, but in reality, you are wearing uh, a false, you're, you're, you're presenting a false identity on who you really are. So your expectations are unrealistic because you've sold this person somebody who he really is not going to have every day it's all a dress up it's like you know back in the day when you played dress up or you had a play you played the part you're playing a part you're not playing the reality of who you really are that's some of the reasons why relationships fail let's talk about another one poor communication see a lot of times what we do is we do a lot of posturing we do a lot of posturing from both sides, from both male and female sides. We do a lot of posturing. We get out there. We act like we're somebody different. We go out and spend a lot of money on expensive suit. We, we go out there and we make up false uh, identities of who we are, what we accomplish. That's a lot of posturing. And then what follows that? A lot of pontificating. We do a lot of pan to pontificating. We are more reactive than we are proactive, and that's in our pontification. We get out there and we tell people, oh, yeah, I've been here, I've been there, I've been everywhere. But you're not savoir faire, because savoir faire is everywhere. And so if you do poor, if you have poor communication, you don't, you don't talk to people about what your needs are, what your expectations are. Let's see if we can communicate together, first and foremost. Because at the end of the day, when everything else is gone, what is left but your ability to be able to talk to one another to express to each other how you're feeling how your day was how uh does that person really make you feel if you're addressing and you have a problem you don't hold on to that problem because it only exasperates problems later that become part of the journey so your communication needs to be very it needs to be a one it needs to be it needs to be a you need to be able to communicate with that person about anything about anything that's what makes relationships successful um the other one of them next one is external pressures how many times do we believe that our our relationships are defined by what others think of that person right you may like somebody and then all of a sudden you introduce them to somebody in your family or somebody who's close to you and they say i don't like them for you well did you give me the opportunity to say who i like for you right we, we external pressures because we're constantly trying to please others that the external pressure of who we choose becomes a very daunting exercise because we're trying to make sure that the people in our circle like them. And so those external pressures are very, very uh, damaging to a relationship. And one other one is unresolved past traumas. All of us bring trauma to, the, uh, to everything we do in our life. Everything that has happened in our life how we dealt with it is what affects our relationships. You know, even in, 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 in not just in relationships between couples, but in relationships with, with coworkers, in relationships with um, uh, individuals you encounter in a daily activity. Because of your past trauma that you have not unpacked or you have not released back into the universe, it becomes a problem. And so many times we get into relationships without addressing what happened to the relationship 
prior to that one. You know, we blame the other person because it makes us feel good. But we also have to look in the mirror and find out what did we do to contribute to that person's actions. Now, I'm not saying anything about uh, physical abuse or anything like that. Uh, I'm not condone. I'm not. I'm not condoning that as as unresolved past trauma. But what I am saying is that our poor communication sometimes leads to not exploring and talking about unresolved past traumas. Now, let's move to real quick. Let's move to a few solutions. Let's move to a few solutions because I never want to talk about uh, problems without the solutions. And if people knew about the Rory T. Howard show with the, with the wonderful Sheila Robinson, that's what we talked about. We can't talk about the problem without a solution. So let's talk about a few solutions that can help your relationships become more successful and more thriving and can be more productive in you moving forward just in relationships in general, right? So the first one will be open communication. Learn how to communicate. Learn how to express yourself. Uh, for a man... Expressing yourself doesn't define you as being weak. It defines you as being competent. It defines you as being able to address what you're feeling. Because, man, we feel too. Please don't walk around here like you got armor on and that you don't have feelings. We do have feelings. Women may 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 be more emotional, but some of these brothers I see out here, they are in competition with, uh, with being emotional. So be able to have... A, open communication, be, be able to express how you feel, what your desires are, what you need in your life, and what you will not accept. Once both parties and individuals in relationships express that, you can become a little bit more uh, proactive in your relationships. Let's talk about another one, which is really big, trust. How do you define trust? See, everybody defines trust by, uh, by very small parameters. So as you're moving forward, when you're talking about solutions, define trust between the two of you. Define trust between you and your coworkers. Define trust between you and your children, you and your grandchildren, you and your exes. Define what trust means and how you're going to trust each other in making a productive journey. Because no matter what relationships you've been in, they will affect your overall outcome. Let's go to another one. Flexibility. You have to have, be flexible. You have to be flexible. You have to give and take. You can't walk into a relationship and think that what you bring to the table is the bottom line. Is that if you don't accept what I bring to the table, then then there's no accepting. You have to be flexible because what you're doing is you're walking into another person's space. And in most cases, I'm going to talk about this a lot as we talk about those self-talks. Next session, we're going to talk about self-talks and how they affect. When you walk into somebody else's uh, space, you're combining two energies. And so if your energy is not positive and your energy is not, incom incompa is com not compatible with their energy, then you're going to have friction. That's why you have to be flexible. Understand what this person does. Understand what this person feels, what this person needs, what this person needs from support for you. So you have to be flexible. That's what's going to help relationships be really, really proactive and productive. Let's talk about another one, independence. Some people get in relationships and there's either two ends of the spectrum. You're either not connected at all or you're too connected. Everybody is an individual. Everybody needs space. That's where the trust comes in. So if you like to travel and your spouse doesn't want to travel with you, or your significant other or your friends don't want to travel with you, you have to be independent. If you like traveling, then either travel by yourself or find a group of individuals that travel. If your significant other likes to go to get their hair dead and the nails done and their toes done and get a spa. You don't need to be up under them. Let them go and get all that stuff because that's their balance. That's their independence. You can't be up under somebody or you can't act like you don't care. If you act like either one of those sides of the spectrum, spectrum, I guarantee your relationship will not last long at all. And let's see what the last one is. Be impatient. Nothing was built overnight. If you believe in if you believe in the way this world was created, at least it took seven days to build this world. So you have to be patient. If it took seven days to create this world, it's going to take a little bit longer for you to have a successful relationship. You need to be patient. You don't come into something believing that I need results right away because results will not happen right away. Results are uh, a product of understanding how to navigate. Results are a ritual that will define how patience and how successful you can be. 
So those are some of the things. I know I went a little longer today, but this relationship thing could have been about an hour long, which I will not absolutely, absolutely will not do unless we're in a session uh, and, and you are participating in one of my retreats or one of my uh, presentations or workshops. But if you feel some of this information was valuable and you would like to have a further discussion with the good doctor, then you can go, and I, I still didn't know how to create this, but I'm going to put it up here then. This is my calendar information right here. Go here. Go here. There it goes. Go to my calendar. Book a uh, exploratory exploratory uh, session with me, and let's talk about it. If 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 you feel that that you have it all in or in order, you might have some people who are in a relationship with you, who might need to um, utilize my services. But like we say all the time, um, everybody is not for everybody. But if 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 you believe that something I can provide for you is for you, please uh, reach out. You can also send me an email at Rory T. Edwards one at gmail.com. Once again, that's Rory T. Edwards one at gmail.com. And again, I hope everybody had a great holiday and hope you're looking forward to uh, establishing great relationships moving into the new year, which is really uh, jumped up on us really quick. This year went by really fast. So that means that uh, I have a Either you're getting older and more wiser and mature, or you're stagnant. So until the next time we talk, uh, I want everybody to continue to build positive relationships. I want everybody to continue to be blessed and also understand that you are not alone in this journey. You are not alone in this journey. And until we talk again, this is Dr. Rory Tierwis, and I'm gone. I'll shake.